I did see President Clinton at the Phoenix airport um, as I was leaving, and he spoke to myself and my husband on the plane. Um, our conversation was uh, a great deal about his grandchildren. Uh, it was primarily social and about our travels. He mentioned the golf he played in Phoenix. Uh-huh. Attorney General Loretta Lynch, got to give kudos to ABC 15, the ABC affiliate in Phoenix, getting wind of the fact that Attorney General Lynch entertained former President Bill Clinton on her government-provided plane at Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix for a half an hour meeting. You heard the Attorney General say they were just talking about grandkids and golf. Yeah as uh, the Benghazi report was issued, and as, of course, there is an investigation involving Mrs. Clinton and her emails. This is fodder for our panel. And let's welcome back that panel, beginning with the gentleman Skyping in from Southern California, the political commentator and the son of President Ronald Reagan, Michael Reagan, who you can find and follow on Twitter at Reagan World, and also with us uh, from Newsmax Washington, Democratic strategist and the founder of Trident DMG, Josh Galper. So, Michael... Do you buy the notion that the attorney general and the former president just discussed grandkids and golf? Well, listen, the position that the attorney general's in with what's going on with the Clinton Foundation, what's going on with Hillary Clinton, she should know better than to meet with anybody related in that kind of an operation. The other thing I was thinking about as you were setting up the story was, you just don't walk accidentally into a government plane. You have to be invited into a government plane to be able to speak and talk to somebody else in that government plane. So why was he invited in? I can't believe the attorney general said, hey, I want to invite old you know, Bill Clinton in to talk about grandkids. That's not how it goes down. There's something else I think was going down. And I think that in fact, Loretta Lynch needs to recuse herself from anything having to do with the Clinton Foundation or Hillary Clinton. Uh, Josh, those trained in the law and certainly Bill Clinton, though uh, prevented from practicing law in his home state of Arkansas because of recent de or difficulties a few years back, he's trained as a lawyer. He was the attorney general of Arkansas before coming governor, becoming governor. He goes in to the plane with Attorney General Lynch even if they only discussed grandkids, as the Attorney General claims, the appearance it has to be troubling even to you. Well, I really, I really do think this is a, a non-story and something that um, we're talking about tonight and probably won't be um, you know, later this week. I, I don't know who invited who into the plane, but I, we have heard what the Attorney General has had to say about what happened in the conversation, which sounded like it was quite brief and uh, social. Um, and uh, I think more than that is just speculating. We, none of us were in uh, the room uh, to hear about it. One thing we should uh, know, of course, too, is, is that the Attorney General is a career federal prosecutor who's been running an extremely d diligent and deliberate uh, investigation, uh, wide-ranging investigation into the, the emails. And uh, there's no reason, based on this particular meeting, that there's doubt cast, in my mind, on um, how that investigation has been run. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe she's just doing her own <clears throat> investigation. Tell you what, let's go back to the phones at 1-877-NEWSMAX. My favorite town to announce. From Shikshini, PA, Suzanne is on the line. Hi, Suzanne. Hello there. It's good to have you. How do you see all of this going down? And Hillary and Bill and uh, well, how this campaign shapes up? I wanted to say, you know, Hillary said that she did things that makes her look untrustworthy, and she has to work on making herself tr trustworthy to the public. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this woman has a cold heart. And how do you think these people feel that lost their family in Benghazi and see her face on TV and then they're going to have her as president? Come well, on. We really appreciate I'm your perspective, Suzanne, and we understand what you're saying. Let me go to Michael Reagan 
because, Michael, uh, somewhere there in Southern California, there's a guy who I think is still languishing in prison, ostensibly b- because of uh, bounced checks. But the guy who supposedly made the anti-Muslim uh, YouTube video that got all the attention years ago. And now we know that whole notion of the YouTube video was an absolute ruse rolled out in the closing days of the 2012 campaign to protect Mrs. Clinton, Mr. Obama, and Mr. Obama's re-election uh, prospects. Is Hillary going to be able to do anything to regain trust in the eyes of American voters? No, not on that level at all. When you look at Benghazi, uh, the reality of it is that when you really tear it apart, the one issue I think that's going to stick to Hillary Clinton is the fact that she did lie to the American public and she did lie to the families, as the caller said, of those that lost their lives at Benghazi. She did that, the President of the United States did, his whole government in fact lied about that issue. And then you have to ask the question, why would you lie? And then what's behind all of that? So I think she'll never overcome the issue of lying to the loved ones who lost their lives there at Benghazi. Josh, according to our parent website, Newsmax.com, new documents indicate that the former IRS director of exempt organizations, Lois Lerner, likely broke the law. In 2010, she transferred over a million pages of tax returns to the DOJ's criminal division, the returns mostly from nonprofits, and the transfer occurred before a meeting concerning the political activity of the groups. Now, Lerner committed the largest unauthorized disclosure of tax return information in history. When you see this, and we were speaking earlier about the Attorney General, why on earth is she going to skate? This this has to concern everybody, Republicans and Democrats, does it not? Well, J.D., before I uh, respond to that, I'd love to be able to respond to Michael's comment um, about uh, Hillary Clinton uh, being dishonest about uh, Benghazi, the administration being dishonest about Benghazi. There have been eight investigations into uh, what happened in Benghazi, and I don't believe that that was any conclusion that was made by any uh, body looking at it, um, including uh, five congressional investigations, you know, led by um, the Republicans. Um, and and I think what what has come out in the facts is that she was doing everything she could uh, to to um, address this situation afterward to review. Um, policies, procedures, and you know, Ambassador Pickering led uh, the accountability uh, review panel that looked into that, um, and uh, and also uh, had had um, eleven hours of testimony in the fall. Um, if, so if I, I, I think that in, if I could jump in, we know that Hillary sent email to her daughter that it was a terrorist attack. We all heard Hillary say that was caused by a video. As we heard the President of the United States say it was caused by a video. As we heard his spokesman for the United Nations say it was caused by, in fact, a video. So everybody in the administration was saying it was, a, it was in fact, caused by a video. And the, and the Secretary of State who said that was telling her daughter on the back channel that, in fact, it was a terrorist attack. So we know that she lied. There's no cover-up for that. You can talk about all the other stuff you want to talk about, but there really is no cover-up for the fact the American people were lied to about what caused this to go down at at Benghazi. Gentlemen, last night, Senator Mike Lee was on this program discussing Donald Trump's candidacy and why the Utah Republican has not endorsed the presumptive nominee as of yet. Let's look and listen. I still do have some concerns. I have not endorsed him. Uh, I would like to see him moving forward with an uh, aggressive agenda of constitutional reform, one that would focus on federalism and separation of powers. Uh, I've been looking for a candidate who would embrace that. I found a couple of candidates in this race who would. Mr. Trump has yet to do that. I'd like to see him go in that direction. Uh, Michael Reagan, uh, do you agree with Senator Lee? Are you uh, ready to consider uh, throwing active support behind Donald Trump at this juncture? No, I'm not ready to throw active support behind Donald Trump, but the reality is nobody cares what Michael Lee said. I mean, nobody's sitting there talking about this outside of maybe talk radio and conservative media about separation of powers. People are talking about jobs. People are talking about, you know, what's going on with the war on terror. 
what's going on with immigration? Fair enough. And, and what's going on now is I got to ask Josh. Josh, when you see dissension among the Republican ranks, that's got to be music to your ears. 15 seconds to close us out, sir. It is fascinating to watch, and the latest chapter has been the U.S. Chamber of Commerce's very strong reaction to Donald Trump's um, trade uh, policies in his speech yesterday. Um, so, yeah, it, all it, right. it, it is all good for the Democrats. Josh, great to have you. Michael, as always, we appreciate it. As for the U.S. Chamber, come on. They're completely for open borders and amnesty. More after this.